welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kiana and I do a lot of sewing and fashion videos. And today I finally have the tutorial and pattern for this leather puff heart cut up dress. I know you guys have really been waiting for this pattern, so I'm happy that I finally have it out. It was a complicated one, so thank you for giving me the time to create it. So if you wanna see the whole process of how I created this dress, I have that in a bunch of YouTube shorts. I'll link that down below. It's basically just some short little vlogs on the process of me designing, patterning, and prototyping this dress. But if you would like the pattern for this dress, that is the first link down below. And you know, I always love to give you guys a discount code for those of you who are watching this video soon after it's uploaded. So if you would like to get this pattern for 30% off, you can use the code HEARTPUFF until tomorrow at midnight Eastern time. All right, so a little bit about this pattern. I definitely would classify this pattern as more of an advanced pattern, mostly because of one, the heart cut out, and then two, because of the actual puff shape to it so this dress underneath this layer right here actually has a layer of netting it's a multi-tiered netting layer and then underneath that it also has lining so it's a little bit complicated and hard to keep track of um, if you're just a beginner so i would recommend doing that if you're more intermediate to advanced only but of course you know if you are a talented beginner go for it definitely you could totally opt out of the netting underneath and the lining if you don't want to have that. The only reason I put the lining in actually is because the netting is there and you don't want that netting rubbing up against the skin because it'd be a little bit uncomfortable. So to make the dress easier, I would just omit those two layers. I might omit the heart cut out, but yeah, if you omit those two layers, it's not gonna be as puffy as this unless you use a fabric that stands up on its own really well. All these supplies and materials that you are going to need for this pattern is also in that first link down below and then all the equipment I'm using throughout the video is in the listing description below. Anyways, I think that's everything, so let's get into the tutorial. So first, we're gonna print out our pattern. Make sure you print it out at 100% scale. Personally, I really like to print it out on cardstock to make it a little bit more durable, but that's optional. Then I'm just going to line up my sheets of paper without overlapping. It's okay if you don't have borderless and your printer doesn't print lines all the way to the edge of the sheet. That's fine. Don't overlap the paper. Don't trim down the paper. Just line up the paper edge to edge and match up those lettered and numbered diamonds. Then tape together your pattern and then cut out the pattern with the size you would like to create. For reference, I'm creating a US size two, but make sure you reference your instruction pamphlet to figure out what size you are based on the size chart. So the first step is to sew that heart cutout. If you're not doing the heart cutout, you can skip forward in the video. So the heart cutout, you're going to sew with quarter inch seam allowance. Now you can trust yourself to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance, but sewing around a curve like this is pretty hard. So right now I'm just marking a quarter inch around the edge of that heart so I know exactly where to sew. I'm marking on the wrong side of the fabric so I can put the shell and the lining front center bodice pieces together, right sides together, and pin those in place. And then I'm gonna sew along the line I just marked. I think it's really important to mark this line first, but to each their own, I just highly, highly recommend it. And so here's a visual of me actually sewing this seam. I am actually going extraordinarily slow when sewing this seam, especially around the curve of the heart. When I hit the curve, I'm honestly going stitch by stitch and moving the fabric between each stitch to make it perfect. The key to this is go extremely slow. Do not try to rush through the seam. Now the key to making your heart look absolutely perfect is to make a ton of clips into the curve of this heart. I'm doing clips just a couple millimeters apart all over this heart curve. I'm also going to clip into the corners of the heart. This is going to make the heart look a lot smoother when you flip the heart right side out. If the heart looks like it's pulling and the seam is kind of lumpy, that means you probably didn't make enough clips or you did not clip close enough to the seam. Obviously don't clip through the seam, but you do wanna make a ton of clips. Now I'm just going to stay stitch around the entire perimeter of the center front bodice piece. So I'm just gonna sew a basting stitch within the seam allowance around the entire perimeter. This just joins the shell and the lining together as one piece, so it stays nice and secure while I'm sewing it. Now I'm going to sew the center front and the side front bodice pieces together, right sides together along those vertical seam lines. 
I'm gonna sew and then serge the seam. However, if you're using faux leather like I am, you technically don't even need to serge the seam because it's not gonna fray. But to make it look a little more professional, we're gonna do that. And then of course, I'm going to press those seams. And be careful if you're using faux leather like I am, you don't wanna iron on the front side of the faux leather. Now I'm going to sew the side back and center back pieces together at those princess seams. Don't sew it at the center back seam, just sew them together at these two princess seams. And of course, again, I'm gonna serge and then press that seam as well. Now I'm gonna take the back bodice and place it right sides together with the front bodice, and I'm going to sew, serge, and press the shoulder seams and and the side seams. And a little tip to make your garment look as professional as possible, try and make sure at the shoulder seams, those princess seam lines actually line up when you're sewing the seam. Just like this, it's just a little thing to be aware of that makes your garment look that much more professional. And then another tip, because I know people always struggle with this, just be aware your raw edges of the fabric are not always gonna be the same length, but your stitch lines always should be. So half an inch down from that raw edge is our stitch line, and that lines up perfectly, and then once you flip the garment out, it looks perfect. But when you had it flipped the other way, the raw edges looked like they were different lengths and that's because they are. So just be careful. Don't try to line up your raw edges. Try and line up the stitch lines. Now for the skirt, I'm going to place the front and back skirt pieces right sides together and sew along the side seams. Then of course, I'm going to serge and press along the side seams. Now we're going to create the gathered skirt. So for this, I'm going to sew two rows of basting stitches within the seam allowance at the waistline of the skirt. Do not back stitch at the beginning or end of the basting stitch. This way we can pull on the threads and give that gathering effect later. So two rows of basting stitches right next to each other in the seam allowance at the waistline of the skirts. I also like to start about half an inch away from the side seam of the skirt, just so you don't have gathers in that side seam allowance later. I'm going to grab two threads. I'm going to separate the top threads from the bottom threads, the bobbin threads, and I like to pull on the bobbin threads for this. It doesn't matter which threads you pull on the top or the bottom, you just need to be consistent with that. So I'm going to be choosing to pull on the bobbin threads and I'm just going to gather up that fabric until it is the correct width. To check to make sure it's the correct width, I'm going to place it against the bodice and see if the skirt gathers up to fit into the bodice. Make sure you're also trying to line up the side seams of the skirt with the side seams of the bodice. Once you have everything lined up, I also just like to double knot all of the threads. So I'll take the bobbin threads, I'll double knot those, I'll take the top threads and then I'll double knot those. That way I know the width of this skirt is not going to change as I move it around. After you've pinned the bodice and the skirt together, you can go ahead and just sew them and then serge them. Now to sew the sleeve. So I'm going to take the sleeve, fold in half right sides together and sew that inseam and then serge and press the inseam. Now I'm going to look at where my notches are on the sleeve. If you look at your sleeve pattern, you'll notice there were notches. So I'm going to sew two rows of basting stitches between those notches from one notch all the way around the sleeve cap to the other notch. I'm gonna sew two rows of basting stitches within the seam allowance so that we can gather the fabric. Do not sew here between the two basting stitches. Now following the exact same procedure as before when we gathered the skirt, we are going to gather the sleeves. So gather up the sleeves and then it will look like this. I'm going to line it up with the bodice. So I have the dress actually turned inside out and the sleeve turned right side out and I'm placing the sleeve into the arm side of the dress right sides together. The leather is touching each other, it's right sides together. I wanna make sure when I'm putting this into the arm side, I'm lining up the inseam of the sleeve with the side seam of the dress, the notches of the sleeve with the notches on the arm side of the dress, and then the shoulder seam and notch of the sleeve with the shoulder seam of the dress. Once everything is lined up and those gathers are distributed evenly across the sleeve, I'm gonna bring it over to my sewing machine and sew that, and then of course, serge it. Now we're just going to hem the sleeve like this, so the other one's unsewn, so we're gonna sew that now. It's one inch hem allowance, so I'm going to fold over the hem 
twice at half an inch and then top stitch that down. Now on the wrong side of the sleeve, I'm going to take a ruler and mark a line two inches from the edge of the hem. So I'm just gonna use a ruler and I'm going to use some type of marking device. I really like Taylor's chalk because it disappears with an iron, but just mark all the way around that sleeve. I'm going to take my thin elastic and I'm going to line it up with the mark we just made. I'm using white here just so you can see I'm actually gonna use black later, but I'm going to stretch the elastic as much as possible while I'm sewing to create that gathered effect. So here's me actually doing it. So I'm just gonna get it started by backstitching at the start of my seam. And then again, I'm going to pull the elastic as much as I can without doing it too much that you're gonna end up breaking a needle. But you wanna pull that elastic pretty good so that you can create those gathers. I'm making sure to keep the elastic lined up with a line that I made with my tailor's chalk. And I'm just going to stitch directly in the center of that elastic. When I get to the end, I'm just going to overlap the end of the elastic with the beginning of the elastic and then back stitch again and then after that you are done with the sleeves and you have this beautiful easy gathering effect that cinches on your arm perfectly now we're going to get into the petticoat and lining tutorial and again this is a little bit more challenging but it is not necessary it is optional if you want that puffy look so if you want that puffy look follow this tutorial if you don't skip ahead so first we're gonna start with the petticoat netting. So if you haven't cut out your netting yet, do so now. I did not include a pattern for this. I instead included a table because you are just cutting out rectangles and you would waste literally about like 40 sheets of paper if I did include the pattern just for a rectangle. So that's why I've chosen to create a chart for you guys. So I am sewing with two layers for each tier, two layers of netting, just because I want this petticoat to be extra stiff and stable to hold that skirt into the puff shape. The second tier as well, I'm using two layers. I actually cut out one big rectangle for the second tier though, and just folded it in half and pressed it to create an edge that was not a raw edge. So later on, I wouldn't have to worry about finishing the hem. So for both tiers, we're going to sew two rows of basting stitches in the seam allowance at the top just like we've been doing before and for the first layer i'm also going to just sew one row of basting stitches at the bottom just to make sure that everything stays in place when i'm gathering it i want these two panels of fabric to act as one so i'm just stay stitching along the bottom the top however exact same method that i did before when we were gathering the skirt when we were gathering the sleeves so i'm just going to gather the top of the first tier and the top of the second tier and then sew those right sides together so to sew them together i'm going to place the top of tier two at the bottom of tier one right sides together and sew and serge that seam and then you have this huge puffy underskirt now, just to make this garment a little bit more professional, I'm going to finish the center back edges of the skirt to so those straight edges right there with some bias tape. I'm just going to bind the edges with some bias tape. And if you don't know how to sew bias tape, I will link a video down below, but I just want to do this because the netting can be a little bit sharp and I don't want it to catch anything. Now we're gonna set this aside and work on the lining. So for the lining, I'm just gonna place the front and back skirt pieces right sides together. Sew, serge, and press along the side seams. Then at the center back, I'm just going to hem the center back. So I'm gonna fold it a quarter inch twice to use a full half inch hem allowance, and I'm going to top stitch that down. This is to prepare for later on. Now I'm going to bring these two skirt layers over to the actual dress and I'm going to place them at the waistline of the dress. However, I'm not going to bring it all the way to the center back. I'm not gonna line up the center back of the netting and the lining with the center back of the shell fabric. I'm going to place them about an inch away from the center back edge of the shell fabric, the dress. This is because I do not wanna catch these layers later on when I'm sewing in the zipper because we don't want all these layers to be connected at the center back seam. We want them to all be their own separate free layers. So I'm just gonna pin along the entirety of the waistline, all three of those layers of fabric and then I'm going to sew on that waistline again just to attach them all at the waistline and then I'm gonna serge all right so now I'm going to prep the facing by placing the front and back facing pieces right sides together and sewing along the shoulder seam and remember what I said about the raw edges not matching up but the stitch lines matching up same thing here 
And I'm also going to add my interfacing to this facing piece on the wrong side of the fabric. As you can see, the interfacing is lined up with the long edge of the facing and it is not in the seam allowance at the center back or the neckline. Now we're gonna move on to the zipper. Disclaimer here, I'm doing it this particular way because I'm sewing with faux leather. You technically don't have to do it this way if you're sewing with other types of fabric, but you can also use this method for any types of fabric. So do it this way if you want, do it another way if you would like. So I've already pressed that center back seam under half an inch, so it has this nice clean edge. But I'm just placing my zipper at the center back seam and figuring out where that zipper stops. And I'm going to sew from where the zipper stop is to the hem of the dress. So I'm just going to mark that and then pin that center back seam and sew from the hem to where the zipper stops. Or you can sew a little bit past where the zipper stops. Now I'm gonna grab some wonder tape, which is just tape that dissolves when you put it under some water. And I'm just gonna place this on the folded edge of that center back seam. So it's technically on the face of the fabric, on the faux leather right side of the fabric, but it's on the seam allowance that will be hidden later on. I'm going to use this to stick my zipper on that center back seam. So this is basically like double-sided tape that just dissolves when you wash the dress. So I'm unzipping my zipper and placing that zipper face down where the tape is, basically exactly where I want it to be after it's sewn. This is just gonna help keep it in place. Now I'm going to grab the facing that we prepared earlier and place it against the neckline of this dress. I'm gonna line up the center back edge of the facing with the center back edge of the dress and stitch that down first with quarter inch seam allowance, just so it doesn't go anywhere. Then I'm going to line up the facing with the rest of the dress around the neckline and I'm going to pin that in place or use clips like I've been doing. But before we go ahead and sew the seam, let's take a special look at the center back area so right here where the facing is connected to the dress I'm going to fold it inwards once I'm gonna fold that seam allowance towards the body of the dress once not towards the facing towards the body of the dress once and then I'm going to go ahead and sew that neckline seam after that just go ahead and trim the seam and make some clips in it if you want to make sure that it lays nice and smoothly around the neckline but the reason why we folded that center back seam in is because when you flip the facing to the right side, that edge is nice and clean. Look how clean and beautiful that edge is. Now we're gonna finish the facing by understitching. So I have the body of the dress on the left, the facing on the right, and the seam allowance underneath pointed towards the facing. I'm going to stitch through the facing and catch the seam allowance under Neath. I'm gonna stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the seam line. You're not gonna be able to get to the very edges of the center back seam, the start and the end of this seam, so just keep that in mind. But the understitching is just going to help keep the facing from rolling out while you're wearing the garment. Now we're gonna top stitch that zipper in place. Right now it's just stuck on with tape, but we're gonna go around and top stitch about three eighths of an inch or a quarter inch around the entirety of that zipper. So starting from the top, sew all the way down, sew across, and then sew all the way back up. You wanna take this very slowly. And a little tip is when you get towards the bottom of the zipper where the zipper stopper and the zipper head is currently, um, before you get to that point, I would just zip up the dress. So lift the presser foot and close that zipper so you don't have to sew directly next to the zipper head. The zipper head is the piece of the zipper with the pulley on it that you use to actually zip open and close your dress. But if you sew right next to that, um, it can kind of make your needle move over to the side and make your line not straight. So I just like to make sure wherever I'm sewing, it's not near that zipper head. So I just open and close the zipper as needed while I'm going. And then this is what the zipper will look like after you are done. So we just put in our centered zipper. Now the underskirt is still open at the center back seam. So the netting and the lining at the center back seam are not sewn. So starting with the netting, I'm going to place it right sides together and I'm going to sew close the center back seam at the second tier. I'm gonna keep the first tier completely unsewn because we need to get the dress on somehow. 
And I'm gonna do the same thing with the lining skirt. So I'm gonna place the center back seam right sides together and I'm gonna sew that as well, leaving the top portion of the skirt open by the zipper so that we can still get the dress on somehow. So this is what it looks like now. And then the last step is to hem all three layers. So for the lining, I just folded over the hem a quarter inch twice and top stitched that down to use a half inch hem allowance. For the netting, you could hem it with some bias tape. But remember before I chose to fold my netting so that I would have a finished edge already. And for the shell, I'm going to fold the hem under a half inch twice to use a full one inch hem allowance and top stitch that down. The very last sewing step would be to tack down the facing just to make sure it does not roll out while you're wearing the garment. So at the shoulder seams, I'm going to sew through the seam allowance at the shoulder seam and the facing. I'm just going to sew it down with a little tack and this is just going to keep it extra secure. Now, after that, you are completely done. But of course, as you saw, I just added some rhinestone trim around the entire dress and I just used some rhinestone glue on my faux leather to keep that in place. You can also sew the rhinestones if you want, but of course, obviously that's an optional design choice. But that's it, now you're done with your dress. All right guys, that is how you make this leather heart puff dress. Let me know if you guys are going to try it and let me know what fabrics you're gonna use, if you're gonna use rhinestones, if you're gonna do the heart cutout, let me know what your sewing plans are. And don't forget the link to the pattern is the first link down below and you can use the code heartpuff until tomorrow at midnight Eastern time for 30% off. If you enjoyed this video, if you liked it at all, if you learned a little bit of something, anything, feel free to give me a thumbs up because it's the easiest way to support your favorite creators for free. Also feel free to follow me on Instagram and TikTok my handle is Kiana Bonolo. Don't forget to check out the vlog process for this dress if you haven't already. It's linked down below. Make sure you subscribe and turn on that notification bell because you don't want to miss out on future pattern discounts. And I think that is everything. So I will see you guys next time. Bye!